You can see my screen, okay, right? Yeah. Okay. So last time, in last meeting, we went over a course on fine filters. Well, we didn't actually get to the fine filter part. And the fine filters are just basically like financial fundamental income data. Um, so last week we went over course filters, which filters on like basic trade trading information, like share price, volume, etc. But once we go into the fine filter, then we start de delving into the fundamental data, financial data, uh, balance sheets, etc. Like more of the like fundamental side of evaluating a company. So again, these are just we went over this uh, last meeting, and so let's let's dive into today's goal. Today's goal is to filter to have a price to earnings ratio is less than 40 and just um, and the price to earnings ratio is basically taking the earnings of a company um, price to earnings is basically taking um, the total if you if you bought a company outright if you bought a company outright how much it would it cost and that would be the price and then you divert uh, divide it by the um it could be like 12 month earnings i think it's usually 12 month trailing earnings and so what that sort of gives us is like based on how much the company costs to, um quote unquote in how many years will we will the company make back the money that the company is worth so say a company is worth like a thousand dollars and then your uh, earnings is, per year is like five hundred dollars. Then your price to earnings ratio is two because a thousand divided by five hundred is two, and so that means you earn a lot of money relative to the cost of the company. And so usually the lower their ratio, the more, quote unquote more fund uh, fundamentally valuable this company is because it earns a lot of money. It earns more money relative to the price of the company. However, um, with recent market conditions, this is sort of like. <laughs> doesn't really work anymore, but we're not going to go too much into that. Uh, the thing is with tech, tech companies, they they can get like really high price to earnings ratio up to like 200. But like Amazon and Tesla and all these tech companies, they had, it take like 200 years for a company to net profit, to profit enough money to um, earn back the money that the company is worth. And I'm not that's just something to be aware of, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. And then another thing is um, another fundamental factor that we can analyze is the return on assets. So based on how much assets, um, what return do you get on it? So if you have like a thousand dollars, maybe like two thousand dollars assets, and then you make a thousand dollars, then your return on assets is um, fifty percent because for every um, dollar you had in assets, you made uh, half that amount. Um, yeah. And so what we want to do is, so we want to filter by this PE ratio, make sure it's less than 40, and then talk, take the top 10 by a uh, one-year return on assets. Okay. Okay, so... So this is the code from the last meeting. So just reiterate it. So we have this course function and this function and uh, this course function, what it does is it, so we take the course, we sort it by the dollar volume so that we get the most 50, so we can get the top 50, you see here, and reverse makes it so that the larger values go to the front. We get the top 50 stocks by a dollar volume. And what this ensures is that the stock is liquid. Um, okay. And then here we just extract the symbol. And as we went over last week, I mean, no, not last week, not last meeting, the reason we use symbols, um, so each of these cores inside, the, this is a course is like a collection of cores of fundamental objects. And they're like an object that contains a bunch of fields like dollar volume, you can see a dollar volume, volume, share price, has a, Oh yeah, wait. Okay, so and it has all this information, and 
we want to convert this coarse fundamental object into a symbol object so that we can keep consistency. Because when we define a fine filter, we're going to have fine fundamental objects. And we don't want to, well, we could, they could have automatically did it for us, but uh, I think just for the sake of consistency and just the sake of being able to compare symbols, we are going to return symbol objects here and we return symbol objects once we define a frame filter. And just to reiterate from last meeting, the symbol objects are a way to represent a company because if you use like a ticker like AAPL for a company, what happens if it changes to APPL or AAA, right? The ticker is not constant, but the, with, the, with the backend engine, they have a way to automatically determine ticker changes so that we don't have to worry about that. It will automatically detect changes in tickers for the company and it'll like just automatically do a lot of like tracking the company for us. So that's why we use symbol objects. Okay, so our first step is we want to add a find filter function. And so this add universe function is overloaded. So first we, we have a course function and we can just add it. So let's uh, add another function called so find find func. And um, let's define it. Okay, so we called it self.findfunk. I mean, we call it findfunk. So later we have to define it as findfunk. So def findfunk self find. And then let's do um, filter filter PE because we are going to first filter by PE ratio. So f for f in find. Just to iterate it. And then we have to filter it based on some condition. So let's add a conditional statement. So if f dot, and so how do I know what the PE ratio is? Well, I read it here, but let, let's just say this is out of view, okay? Um, what we can do is we can go to the clock connect documentation. Um, so, so we go to the data library because this is <laughs> because we want to look at the fundamentals data. So you can see here, let's just look at the sidebar. So we open up the data library, then we go to the fun, click on the fundamentals, and then we want to search. We can maybe like search p, my p ratio or something like that. And you can see here that this example uses the p ratio, but let's just keep. Actually, uh, dot p ratio, dot p ratio. And you can see that we found that here. And th this just gives like a bunch of stuff. Like say what we want to do is dot ROA or something like that. And so we found the dot ROA. So this is how you can fi uh, find uh, what the exact name of certain um, fundamentals are. And there's a lot of fundamentals. And uh, all these fundamentals are from the Morningstar database. Okay, so so if f dot um, <coughs> um, so f or f and find if f dot um, so let's just copy this uh, p ratio is less than forty, and then let's do um, sorted by uh, ROA one year equals. Um, let's just copy this code. Well, it's probably not gonna sort it. Uh, filter P E. So, so we want the um, higher return on assets because that means we have high. We make more on our assets. So if dot R O A dot one year. Just copy this. And then let's take the first 10 and then let's return return this. Let's do what we did above here. Return C dot symbol for C in sorted by dollar run. F dot symbol F in sorted by early one year. Okay, so one thing we have to do actually in this course is we have to actually check if it has fundamental data or not. So um, let's do that. So let's just take this filter out. And then let's do um, um, let's just call it ten for now. 
uh, no, let's call it has fundamentals. Equals so C for C in course if C dot has fundamental data. And so, and then let's, our, our earlier search um, should maintain, so. Oops, not, not course, by sort of by the ball. So, the reason we have to do check if it has fundamental data is because we get that fundamentals from Morningstar. And so, even though, like, Com most companies should file with the FCC, and that is something you have to do. Um, it doesn't mean Morningstar will have um, fundamental, fundamental data on that company, especially if it's smaller. Like, because you have to process this data, and so they might deem fundamental data, especially if you go into like smaller stocks, like companies that only have like a market cap of like 10 million, 50 million. They might not, the Morningstar might ha not have that data. And because like adding another company, you have to maintain the data. You have to make sure that the data is correct so that your investors can rely on it act to um, accurately make their um, analysis on companies. So if you have some bad data in there, then the investors who use your data are gonna have a problem. So that's, so, but, so that means they want to ensure they have quality data. So for some of these small, smaller companies, they might not have quality that was harder to get, more expensive to get, or just not worth the effort to maintain it. And so that's why we need to check if it has fundamental data or not. And what I think it, what it does is if you don't do that, um, it'll automatically take out the ones that don't have fundamental data. But we want 50 things to have um, 50 symbols um, guaranteed because like say we had 50 symbols and we didn't do that has fundamental data search obviously if it goes down to like 20 stocks or something like because 30 of the 30 stocks that have fundamental data then that would be hard to account for and that might lead to unexpected behavior of the algorithm and so this is why we do that has fundamental data and let's just run this Oh shit, I forgot. Good. Oops, I accidentally did the uh, not the dot operation ratio. All right, let's, I'm just gonna copy this code to. I'm gonna switch my uh, organization. So we can see that it worked. Okay, so something we notice here is that like we have this we have this logic here uh, on data to invest. So we take the symbols that are in our universe that from here. So this the everything that was from here gets passed into here, and then we do another filter here, and then whatever from here becomes our new universe. And this these two functions are called daily, and so. Once, so say a stock no longer meets a certain criteria, then 
the source that um, Quark Connect will automatically um, liquidate that stock and then all the new stocks we're going to invest in. So you can see here. So we take all the symbols. So security, self dot security is basically docs basically gives us our universe of um, quantum X symbols that we can invest in based on our uh, based on how we added our symbols, which was through these two uh, universe function. Then we counted the number of stocks, and then we gave them one divided by number of stocks to give them like uh, equal weighting, give them uh, invest an equal amount in each. Uh, invest an equal amount in each stock. So we can see here that we've added four lines of logic. So what, is there a better way to do these four lines of logic? Like, can we do something to make it just like we want We want to like abstract it away? We want the Quant Connect backend to handle it, just putting some equal investment into all our stocks. So yes, we can. So we, what we can do is we can define a cost alpha model so the, the um, so insights are a way to like <coughs> so insights is basically like a prediction into a future. So say you have, like so what an insight can take is a bunch of arguments with about three million things is um, the symbol with the direction and the time period. So say we have like a, some insight, so like a insight on Apple, and then we think it will go up. And then so we do inside direction dot up. Can you hear that up? And then we want to define the duration. Um, so like how long do we uh, how long do we think it will go for? Maybe like ten days or thirty one days or something. And so we define that here. Um, so what this, this and there's different types of type so type types like inside type of volatility. So like making a prediction based on volatility, but we usually all usually almost always use price. Volatility might be for more option stuff, but or like predictive VIX or whatever. But most people use inside type of price. So we do we based on the um well we're actually doing it based on fundamental data, but it doesn't really matter. And so what this constant alpha model is 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 a basically a way for us to constantly emit these insights to make predictions on these um, stocks. So stocks in our universe or whatever here. So we think whatever gets filtered by these two functions will go up because this is our model. This is our model that we are used to define a universe of stocks that we think will, will do well. And so how are these are just predictions. Um, so when we see a back test, Let's just make, let me, <clears throat> so these are just predictions. <coughs> so we might not, <clears throat> and we might not, we want, with this code right now, with that I'm coming right now, we won't actually trade. You can see that our portfolio doesn't tra uh, change because we didn't do any trading. However, we can see the predictions inside. So we can see, we think that LCRX, the stock for LCRX is gonna go up and we think it will go up for uh, 31 days. But the constant alpha model, what it does is it constantly emit these insights. So like, like say like the next day, that stock is still in your universe, then we know uh, insight for 31 days upwards. So what it does is it just ex basically extends the uh, previous insight. But when you have like, uh, when it leaves our universe, then we do like a flat insight to sell the stock because we, We'll just liquidate it. And so we can see that we make these predictions, but how do we actually trade on these predictions? What we need to do is a way to assign weights to these predictions. So we can do equal weighting portfolio construction model. And so start portfolio, and this is how we construct our portfolio. How do we allocate? Um, how do we allocate? So there's another, and like a different way, it might be um, um, EMA. Or like MACD, like the, like EMA cross or something. I uh, know, like um, actually, uh, I don't like um, like momentum. Like say a stock went up fifty percent, and another stock went up like ten percent. Then when our in our weighting, the um, stock that went up fifty percent will be five times weighted 
we will allocate five times more percentage of our portfolio to that stock than the one that will run only a 10 percent. But this one is just a simple one. We just give an equal weight to each one. So let's rerun it and see that it trades. And we can see that it trades down. Okay. Um, so. <coughs> okay. So now we know how to use fundamental data. Um, so. I think this is a good algorithm to check out. Um, I'm gonna, so you can just type in, uh, so if you're watching this, so quant connect G score messy, just type that into Google, choose the first link that comes up. And this is something that I wrote. And so if you have any questions on it, uh, I'd be a good person to ask because I literally, <laughs> so I gutted up this algorithm. It's based on hyper. And so what it does is it um, takes the, I think, so let, let's just go over it. I'm not gonna go over it too in depth. It is a little complicated, but let's just go over it just for fun. You know, like we take the return on assets. And so the company, so we take the medium for the uh, companies for the same industry, say like tech industry, like a, Apple, we compare Apple to like Amazon, Facebook, whatever. Take all the tech companies, we take the return on assets and see, uh, check if the, um, the return on assets for like a specific tech company is larger than the median of the companies in the same industry. And so what we do is we give a point for that. And so we can, so based on seven factors, there's one factor. So we can have a score of zero to seven. So that's one factor. Then we do the same thing for the cash flow return on assets. We do, we check if the cash flow return on assets is greater than the return on assets. And that might seem a little arbitrary. It's explained more in the paper and then the, uh, um, References. Yep, it's right here. So you can you can click on that and just find the online. <coughs> you can find the paper, uh, paper to watch it ex explains it. And so then we ch check that the variance on so variance on return on assets means that the return on assets is steady, not like super like volatile because like so, let's say you have like an industry that's like a seasonal industry like clothing. Um, like it has like more of a spike in like uh, Christmas and like the, during the holiday season, but like during maybe like uh, the, 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 the spring, like, um, or like the summer, like you're trying to sell like some Grey Goose jackets or some uh, Eddie Bauer jackets. Like during the summer, it's not, you're not gonna sell a lot of those because those are more like, uh, uh, it's for like cold weather jackets. So it can be a little volatile. So this is what can account for like the variance on the return on assets, making sure that the return on assets aren't too volatile. Like, okay, then you have like the R&D to is, um, R&D is uh, higher, the capital expenditure higher and the, the, the advertisements. So these are just basically the different ways that a company, these are just different various avenues that the company can um, reinvest by doing R&D to improve their product, by investing in like capital expenditure, investing in real estate, investing in like corporate offices, investing in like more storefront locations, right? Advertisement expenditure, like how much is this spending on us? So it's like sort of an indicator that a company is spending money to improve and that's and this company is spending a lot of money that um, to like in attempt to uh, improve the company. That's a positive outlook for the company. And so once we have the so it's a boolean yes or no for like higher than medium or like CFR is higher than so these are a bunch of like uh, so it's a yes or no and if it's a yes we get one point so with these seven factors we can get a score from zero to seven and then what we do is we um, go along with the securities with uh, scores of five or higher so let's just go over this so um, this is a lot of code so you can see here so alpha streams brokerage model this is just basically the alpha streams um, I want to over this uh, in another meeting it's just a way for us to license algorithms, for retailers to license algorithms to like big institutions. Cost alpha, no, I just went over that. A media execution model, this is what is used by default, but it basically tells us we want to buy it immediately instead of like buying it out over like the period of like two hours or something. We want to buy it immediately with market order. We equalate it, yeah, we over this. And then we, this is more of an alpha, this is more of a, 
of a model we're doing here. So it's based, very similar. We can see that we have a course filter function, find filter function, data resolution, blah, blah, blah. And this is just sort of the, or whatever. Anyway. Um, so we can see, we do this for tech securities. We check the, the um, check the RA. Um, so we, so we here we do stat variance is lower than median. Um, the return on assets is higher than median. So far we always meet blah, 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 a bunch of median. And then we assign a score, we keep adding. Uh, and then we, you can see here that we um, get the symbols for for the uh, what's to have a G score five or higher. And then we invest on this. Okay, so that's basically the algorithm. Okay, so again, just to remind you, so G score factor investing quant connect. And so that's how you can look at the more in depth into the strategy. Okay, so we went over how to define. So um, in the meeting before we did course of five builders, we went over how to use technical indicators like a simple move average, RSI. In this meeting, we went in the <coughs> Last meeting, and then meeting after that, we went over course uh, course filters, and in this meeting, we went over uh, more in depth into fine filters. And so now we have like a basic um, foundation. We know how to use technical indicators. We know how to filter based on course and find from the data. And we also, oh yeah, we also went over like uh, last quarter. We also went over how to use Python. And so um, hopefully, we have like a more of a technical foundation. So now we're gonna have these projects, and um, the thing with these projects is that, like, I'm not like an instructor. I can't force you guys to do this. So and so, whatever you put in, uh, whatever you guys put in is whatever you get out of it. And but if you put in a lot, and you can ask a bunch of questions for me, like you can ask me a bunch of questions or whatever. If you or you can collaborate with other people. This is a great time to do it, like because you have like the support of the club and you have uh, my expertise, uh, my experience in this field. So, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna have a um, whoever's interested in start doing like projects. You can either do them individually or you can do them in groups. And so, what <laughs> few project ideas um, is take an academic research paper and convert it into quant connect code. You can go to ArcSave. Let's go to Arxiv. So let's um, comp qualitative finance. Can't remember how you do that. <laughs> uh, quantitative finance, catch up. Okay, uh, do catch up. I'm just gonna just put that in. So, um, try to find some. This looks like a paper that, <coughs> or just find some random paper from ArcSiv, or you can go to SSRN. Let's just put this here. Hmm. All right, so you can take like some paper and then like uh, implement this. So, <coughs> so the G score uh, effect investing was something I found from us. So you just type in trading and just Some um, paper from like either ArcSafe or if uh, SSRN or some like <coughs> or some like other um, 
place where you can find some like what the heck, seventy dollars. Uh, there are free ones. Or you can even go to the UF CFRM. CFRM, they have a few. Uh, Publications. Let me just put this in the slides. <coughs> okay. And for this, I'm just going to put this in the details. So you can, so you can take what. Oops. So you, you, you can take one of these articles and like, try to turn it into a, a quant connect, uh, code and quant connect, or you can like uh, like search up some um, algorithm on the like or some training out. Okay, there we go. And then, so you can say maybe like trading strategies, strategies, or something like that. Oh, I don't like so like golden cross or something. Like this. So find it, and then you like uh, implement this or something. And so you can do that on Quad Connect or whatever, or some like other trade couple. But if you're doing Quad Connect, uh, you can do you can ask for my help. And another thing is like we can actually deploy a life. If we find something um, interesting, so that's another reason we use Quantum. But you can use whatever you can use. Uh, IB you can use. Uh, I don't know Binance or some, some like or some like other thing. But like, it's up to you. But <coughs> so so um, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully, you guys. Um, are there any questions? Do you have any questions? Uh, no questions? Okay, um, I'm just gonna end the meeting. Jasmine, you got any questions? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, what's the what's the update on the uh, the trading fund or like the just the club's kind of investment thing? Um, so what I'm gonna so we're gonna have to actually have like the trading strategy. So so part of it, so we can let let's just let me have this on so. <clears throat> If we develop so, uh, some promising strategy, promising strategy or something like strategy, then we can look. We can look into um, getting. Um, take, well, the thing is, like, we need people to like submit some like strategies. Like, we need something to trade our money with, right? So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so what? Um, we do have a bank account set up, so. Okay, so we're, so um, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, if if this project does if we do find some promising strategies or strategies or something or someone interested in making us trade uh, live with real money, what we're gonna do is so we do have a bank account, so we can like and then we can uh, maybe like ask for a grant or something, and then well, or we can, I could just put in like. A hundred dollars of my own money or something, and then so we do have live notes with Quantum, so I I can set that all up and then I just make a IB account and just put some money, put, transfer some money into, it and then just run it live through Quantum. And yeah. so that's what we're doing with that. But we do need like we do we do need strategy. We need we do need the strategies first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but a uh, big question. Yeah, so I, I just thanks for bringing that up. Okay, any other questions? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna end the meeting then. Okay, right. have a good day. Um, stop sharing. Uh, um.